In this video, I'll show you how you can test a little more complex uh, iFlows that obviously exist in most cases with the automation that the FigAuth tool has to make it easier to, to run the testing. So here we have a scenario where we have a iFlow that is started by a timer, that is started by a HTTP and by an SFTP. So it's three different iFlows that then all call one general process here at the end and in here we're just setting uh, yeah now as uh, <laughs> as the payload or, or as the exchange property so to test this we go to the figure ft tool we have synchronized it means we have downloaded all the iflows so we know what iflows are and which versions are available we can then select record messages and we will create messages for this. We will also just specify them in here what type of messages we are dealing with and we just want to collect 10 messages. Um, so that's good. We will create this and then we will select here. We will start the recording and that means it will switch the iFlow into trace mode and then I will trigger the iFlow in the different ways that we can and then we will try to, to download the, the test cases that we have for this. So let me just do that. So now we have downloaded test cases for this. Uh, we can see the data we have here. Uh, we have some inbound groups and some outbound groups. And uh, if we see this inbound, which is the one that we're triggering, I believe, then we can see we've got call activity 10. Uh, let me see here. So this one is the this one we have in here. It's called call activity 10. And we can see it's being called from, from this, uh, this message in this flow. Um, so um, with that, we can see we are processing test cases or created the data. We can create the test case. So we create the test case for it. We will just run on the same agent. And now we are ready to to start this so one of the things we we can check here is we can see do we want to use original uh, receiver or do we want to mock all the services in this case we're just using it um, i guess it really doesn't matter but one of the things the ERT tool needs to do is it needs to replace all the the different communication channels we have in this iflow or starting points with real HTTP endpoints. So if we go back and run the test case, so we'll run this on our system, and then this will take a little while because it needs to deploy this uh, new mock iFlow that it's needing uh, for this to work. So if we go back here to monitor, we should most likely see that this iFlow is starting and we can see that it has message flow all these different mock endpoints so we can see it's able to handle this and if we just open the iFlow we can see all the different endpoints we have has been replaced uh, so we have here the scheduler that has been replaced with some mock data so this means that it really just create a mark where you have all the data into it and it can see everything that happens there. And obviously that takes a little while getting this deployed and then once it's deployed it will then send the messages through uh, with it. Um, and it needs to be fully deployed. So obviously that can take a little while and I'll uh, continue once it's the test has been run and to, to run the test, we are obviously sending messages to these different endpoints and then we'll check the result. So now we have run the iFlow, we have downloaded all the messages and what we can see is in our result here, we can see that there is some errors we are receiving. Let's see what the differences here are. So this was some acquired log was found in the recorded message. Not sure what that uh, means. Uh, we can go and ignore that. So we can look at the div here. I don't know what that means. So we'll just ignore it. Uh, maybe we'll find out what's going on. And we can see we are getting some unexpected messages that's being processed. And not really sure why this occurs. But we have an option here to ignore 
uh, this uh, field for further testing. And we have a button up here that allows us to run the comparison again and see if everything works uh, successful and it will then run asynchronously a comparison again and we can see that everything is now successful. Um, so that's obviously good. Uh, we can also see here uh, message exchange property. So we have a property that's called now that's changing every time. Uh, let's just make a modification into the iFlow. So now I'll just edit the iFlow. I'll add some payloads, new payloads to these things. Uh, and then we will save it as a version. And then obviously it will be interesting to see what happens once we have done this, once we are running the test again, if it will actually pick this uh, up this data. And to do that, we will go to our tracked objects we will synchronize and we'll synchronize just the package that we have demo uh, just because it <laughs> speeds up the process uh, of figuring out what's going on and most likely it will also do this automatically and we can see it has picked up a new version of the iFlow and that means if we go back to our test suite and we open the the test case we just had going to the test here and then we select it and run it on our uh, system we will then expect that it is creating a new version of the iflow so we can see here it's starting the the, the new iflow so both of them are starting if we look at the uh, message flow for this one we can then see the the payload here has been updated so it's able to update all the scripts and everything like that in the iflow and just make sure that it just creates sample mux uh, endpoints to be able to trigger this uh, this testing so once this has been deployed i will uh, it will run the test and let's do the comparison and see how that uh, behaves so until then so that did give us a few more challenges and problems and I guess that is okay because that is what we wanted to, to see once we change some of these things. So we can see we got some diffs here that for here we got the new scheduler um, and I guess that will be all of these that will then contain this text and here we got an, a new one also and if we look at that then we can see it's the new HTTP payload that we have added. Um, so this, we can see everything works as expected, and we can then just go in and update uh, this test case. So next time we run it, this is what we're expecting as output. I hope you saw the, the power of this and how easy it is to create test cases for these more complicated scenarios. Run them without really having to do a lot of work. So we're Go to figaf.com and try it out. It's really simple to get started and uh, yeah, try it out. So uh, thanks for watching.